Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to Russell Rock with Rick Connor. What the F was that entire freaking promo about? Mark Kalbacher. She's like the James Ellsworth of women. And Corey Castle. I look like Paul London and Brian Kendrick mixed. <laughs> hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to Russell Rock in a cave. What's going on, everybody? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, I just want to welcome you all to the show. Uh, yeah, man, sorry about the, uh, the little bit of an echo. I changed my location a little bit. I know it looks exactly the same. It's a bunker. Uh, but I'm now in the, yeah, I'm now in the, in the Brassel Rock bunker. Uh, the most, <laughs> it's like the most echoey place that I've ever seen with sound dampening panels. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to have to deal with this for a little bit until I can fix it. So it might be a couple weeks. But that's cool. How are you guys doing, man? We're, uh, we're, on a, we're a week away from WrestleMania. Yay! We, I'm super excited about it. We were and discussing about everybody else. <laughs> we were discussing it earlier. I was. Uh, we were just worried about like how it's going to perform on Peacock. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, I've been having I've been having issues. Um, I've been having issues with like data lag and all kinds of stuff with Peacock already. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering how a data heavy show that's live, how it's going to do. On yeah. It. It's going to be, the bandwidth is going to be off the charts. I mean, and yeah. they're going to be, they're going to be using every bit of servers that they've got to get that out there running. And uh, like the experiences that I've been having, I've only been dealing with a little tiny bit is that like the sound cuts out on me a little bit, but I mean, that's less of an issue for us personally yeah. because we don't listen to the sound of WrestleMania and stuff. But uh, for others, there's, there's going to be a long laundry list of complaints, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. You're going to have to have one of those those old school computer rooms with all the, the giant cabinets with the two spinning wheels that, that's just an entire building like in the 80s. You <laughs> see them all the 80s movies? I already have complaints. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Peacock Network is basically USA and all their other affiliates, right? Yeah. Why? Why can I not get Monday Night Raw live on the Peacock Network? Because it's all go on USA for some reason. It still has to go on I USA. Think Peacock's, Peacock's more of like a NBC Universal. Uh, but it's it, USA's one of the USA's stories. in that. Yeah, but I'm sure they still have like advertisement contracts for live TV on cable USA Network. <laughs> You pay you pay this money to watch stuff and you can't watch it. And if you know if you notice the Peacock Network, I think their most recent raw is like September. Oh. <laughs> like I mean, can, they're too busy going back and censoring old nineties material right now. So it's uh it's it's the most first world problem we'll have today. I am a first world person. <laughs> I want to watch it live instead of watching it through some guy's Twitch stream that's illegally streaming, and I have to listen to him talk through the entire Raw episode. Because <laughs> I don't want to pay for cable anymore. All right. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is what it is. It's, there's going to be bugs and stuff in the beginning. There was a bunch of bugs and stuff in the beginning of the WWE Network. Uh, I remember WrestleMania 30, I couldn't watch it live, and it had to... <laughs> As soon as I hit play, it skipped directly to Daniel Bryan winning the, the heavyweight championship because <laughs> it completely spoiled all of WrestleMania 30 for me. So, I mean, there was a lot of bugs in the beginning. It kept on freezing and everything else. So we're it's, it's going to be a thing that we're, we're going to have to uh, have to live with. The censoring thing bugs me more than anything else. Um, while Roddy Piper painting half his body black for WrestleMania 6 is incredibly racist, I don't want to never see that match again. Like, because right. not that it was a great match or anything like that, but Rodney Piper's no longer with us, and he was one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. And I like to go back and and watch some of his old stuff. And the fact that that is now completely deleted after I've thrown away my entire DVD collection because I thought we were going to have the WWE Network forever. You did uh, that. Yeah, I did that. I had the entire WrestleMania box set. It was like one through twenty-one or something like Man. that. Man. Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I sold it. I didn't just throw it in the trash. I sold it. But, I mean, I, I didn't think I was going to need it anymore. We had a bit of on one, one convenient little friggin' thing. 
So, yeah, I, I, I get, I get, like they, they're worried with like new, but there's no one new jumping on that's going to magically find Roddy Pipe. Like, I don't, mm. you know, don't get me wrong. It's, it's, you know, it's way past, you know, being okay. You right. know, with that segment. Same with the, you know. The even uh, DX doing the nation of domination thing, which you know we all found hilarious when we were kids. Yeah, you know we we didn't realize like there was like a really bad connotation with yeah. them just making fun of the. Yeah, but, it was like, more about those individuals and not not like a whole culture being misrepresented. Right. That, that's you know that that was that was the time and that like our bad, but like that you can't erase history because then we don't learn from it. Exactly, but that's that's the new mentality now is a race history, and then pretend that everything's been great since the day it started. <laughs> <laughs> There's been puppies and rainbows and everything since you know the dawn of time. Uh, you're talking about Burks. Nick Burke's puppies, Nick Burke, Nick Burke's Nick Deborah Burks. puppies. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Nick Burke has seen that video yet. We should, we gotta show that to him. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna throw that up on YouTube. Um, but yeah, man, it's uh when I was a kid, I had no idea that the, the hot rod hot scott thing had anything to do with race. Um I didn't understand it at all. I was like, why did he paint half of his body black? Like it wasn't like blackface, it was black. Like you took black shoe polish and just went, you know, halfway and, around. And and the, whole, like, the whole Larry story about it was he did that dumb skit and then he couldn't get the shoe polish off his body, he was walking around <laughs> like an idiot. In the airport, and he, like, and he had all kinds of problems trying to fly and everything because of it. So yeah. he got, like, he got his comeuppance for doing something so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and that, uh, that DX Nation of Domination skit was still hilarious. I, I know you shouldn't do blackface. It's absolutely horrible and racist, and it, it's 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 a whole thing. I, I I get it, but that's that's one of the most classic bits of all time, man. Like when you think DX doing when like the Road Dog stuff. doing the the that thing the whole time yeah. with the uh, the the chest protector on, and then right. and then uh, X Pac having the Miz arc, Miz arc, <laughs> and then the the Croc asking him why his boobies went all the way around to his back. Yeah. Like, those were all like funny little insults. Very, very funny. Very funny. Uh, I get it. I get it. I understand mm -hmm. it. But I yeah, mean, for sure, take it down. Sure. There should definitely be like a, uh, you know, and a warning, a rated, a rated R thing or something like, like a section where it's like not for children or not for people that are going to cancel us section. <laughs> is there, you know, <laughs> is there a different time section of the WWE network? Because you could. You can go back and watch Friends and see a whole bunch of racist, racist stuff. Oh, like Friends was homophobic or... as fudge. Yeah, it man. Was, if if sure. you watch Friends, they're like, hey, you're gay. You're a gay one. I, ew, yeah, yeah. you're gay. Like, that's exactly what all of every episode of Friends is. <laughs> I thought we were talking about me and my friends at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> in, the, in the same era. <laughs> hey, you're gay. What a, what a gay person you are. Ew, you're a gay person. Ew, that's like all of what Friends is. Yeah. <laughs> are they gonna edit out? Are they gonna edit out uh, Heidenreich's uh, poetry that he read to Michael Cole? Why, wow, when he was? Uh, Do you remember that? Him up against the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when he was aggressively humping him from behind. Yeah. <laughs> probably. I mean, there's probably a bunch of stuff that's uh, that's gonna go missing. Yeah, I, I I could see a lot of uh, a lot of diva stuff from from uh, the Attitude Era. A lot of that's yep. stable. A lot of uh, the cat the cat's going to disappear. A lot of uh, a lot of the bikini wrestling and the the Booker T promo, different liquids. Oh, the the famous Booker T promo is going to disappear. Mm -hmm. uh, the not, dropping the, the only reason why I think this is scary though is because you have someone like Hulk Hogan who's you know. <laughs> done his dumb stuff over the years what happens if peacock decides well he's been known as a racist so they just wipe out all of hulk hogan out of, out of wwe history like yeah. yeah that's the only thing like every time something like this happens it's usually the first step to something using more extreme and that's yeah. the only thing. 
do I do I see the stuff was they're they're censoring is right now, but like when you start censoring stuff like that, it's like, oh well, we took this much away. Let's just chip this away, and next thing you know, it's like whole wrestlers start disappearing. Right. You 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 create a revisionist history in your own mind. You start romanticizing the wrong parts of who you are and what made you become that. So I think uh, I think taking away big chunks of the past doesn't make them not happen they, it's not like they didn't happen so it's it's weird it's because I, I was talking yesterday about the the this generation of wrestling and uh well i say that like as the old guy i say that as the old the old grizzled vet the oh. the thing like the 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 <clears throat> the passion for the business is different because when when we were when we were watching it as kids, we were watching people who were having like a something that was trying to appear as if it was a fight, and now it's like they're just trying to appear as they're as as if they're pro wrestlers, and not as like not as like tough guy fighters. Yeah, and that's that's it's the bizarre thing about uh, what people grew up watching. You know what I mean? Like it's it's like the the zeitgeist of it that like caught them in the direction to be that type of performer. Well, yeah. another thing is that like you can't a racing history. I get, I get why I get why you want to, but at the same time, it's like you can celebrate Thanksgiving while being completely remorseful that Americans back then or colonists or whatever you want to call them came in and slaughtered an entire race of people, an entire Right. land like mm -hmm. all the indigenous people of, the, of that land right but you can still celebrate thanksgiving you just got to remember that hey that was terrible let's never do that again um and it's <laughs> it's a thing where you know if you're if you're sitting around as a new fan of wrestling and that comes on you have as a person you have to know that that's bad and you can laugh at it or not, but know that and like know in your head, like, oh my god, I can't believe that that actually happened. Well, the other thing, the other thing too, is when you censor the stuff, like you're 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 like like even like you talk about the DX thing, you're censoring DX doing this blackface thing, but then you're censoring part of the Rock's history, mm -hmm. like what what the what helped elevate the Rock to where he is now, like that's why WWE walked the fine line back in the day with Chris Benoit. It's like, all right, well, if we delete Chris Benoit off everything, you you end up erasing, especially three major characters, Eddie, Chris Jericho, and Kurt Angle. You erase like a third of their entire like Very career. Sad. Like, cause how how many matches did they have with each other? How many times were they tagged together? Like right. you you essentially erase like a huge chunk of other people's career and then like and then how do you do that and balance that? Like that's what I'm saying. Like, if you start, if they start chipping away and say, like, say they decide to do something like that with Hulk Hogan, you erase the memories of, like, you know, King Kong Bundy and, and Big John Studd and all these other guys that wrestle him. You erase, like, the biggest moments in their life. And pretty much the only time anybody's really going to see them in the ring is nobody's looking up King Kong Bundy matches, but they'll look up a, a Hulk Hogan match and see him wrestle King Kong Bundy. You know, like, yeah. Stuff like that's scary, man. It's just, it's it, it's a I, I understand why they're doing it and I understand why they shouldn't do it at the same time. And it's like one of those things like you got to balance because like you can look really bad by saying like I don't want them to take this stuff off the TV, but it's you, you have to it's look. Also, it's also look at the other stuff. negative that they're causing. It's not stuff that everyone's going. You know what my favorite thing is? My favorite segment is the DX ripping on on the nation domination. No one's going like, oh, I sit and watch that every day. Ah. But it's like we're, we're we don't want to pretend like it didn't happen. Yeah, because the those moments were real. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I don't remember at that time. I don't. I don't know for sure. And I, I mean, I don't want to speak for anybody, but I don't remember anybody being like visibly upset or verbally upset yeah. about that happening. Plus, the only other big problem is Vince McMahon, you know, because wrestling's like a lot of goofy stereotypes. Vince McMahon took advantage of every racial stereotype you can think of. And yeah. like 
there's a lot that they can erase and say that is like, you know, unacceptable. There's a lot of WWE can just magically disappear. I mean, I've seen, I'm seeing this happen with a lot of people. Like, like there's a big thing with Joe Rogan right now where he got his $100 million contract and then they went back and just started deleting his episodes that they didn't like. Like, and it's like, <laughs> it's like, so, you know, and it was, it was usually due to politics, but it's still like, it's like, you, so you, you sign these rights away to other people manipulating your work. It's a really mm -hmm. weird thing to me. So. Mm -hmm. Any way you shake it, people are going to look at this episode like three middle-aged white dudes uh, just yep. complaining. But we, damn it, let me tell you something. We just want to see the Mexicals. Don't touch our Mexicals, you son of a bitch. I want to see three Mexican or riding lawnmowers. That's what I want to see. Exactly. Like, And they were awesome. <laughs> they were pretty awesome. We look at it differently. We look at it as three like, really like good luchadors going down to the ring and doing this. And we're going to see a solid match. All they see is race on a lawn lawnmower. That's yeah. all they see. So it's mower, mower of lawns. <laughs> mower of lawns. Chair of wheels. <laughs> they, they just see it through a different prism than we do. That's all it is. Different lens yeah. than we do. And it's it, it's and we're gonna. I don't know. Like it's the only people that suffer in this is the fans who want to see history or see certain wrestlers or. Um, because the corporate people don't care, they don't care about wrestling, they just got a they just got another, you know, uh revenue stream. That's all it is yeah. for them. Yeah, it's, it's it's gonna suck for those people that are coming up and that, that actually want to see everything that's happened in wrestling. Um, and there's gonna be stuff that I mean you're, you'll still be able to find some clips and stuff on YouTube and things like that, but it's just not the same thing as watching it all all together as as it should be in the archive that is WWE. Um, but uh, what is definitely going to happen in uh, just a couple of days for us is we're a week away from night one of WrestleMania. Uh, hopefully we'll all get to watch it. But uh, we got a lot of cool things going on. Um, what we did find out is that uh, on SmackDown this Friday, we have two matches that were supposed to be on WrestleMania that are going to be happening on SmackDown. Uh, it's the uh, tag team championship match, the four way dance between uh, Ziggler and Rude, uh, the Mysterios. Uh, well, that's just that's just not a WrestleMania qual caliber match anyway. So I see it that that should be on SmackDown. Yeah, no, no big well, love. I mean, it's a four way dance for the for the tag team championships. Like it's a championship match. I feel like it should be on WrestleMania, and these are people that have been busting their asses all I, year I know, for I the know. pandemic. I know my heart breaks for Otis because last yeah. year on WrestleMania, Otis had probably one of the top three stories of all WrestleMania. Yeah. And now he's not even going to be wrestling on WrestleMania this year. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just weird, dude. Yeah. But like, yeah, I, I just don't see as a WrestleMania caliber match. You know, they, and it, it, it's no fault of the wrestlers. They, they all been killing it. It's just WWE like slap WrestleMania together. So haphazardly this year. Mm. You know. And um, yeah, there's not much build to the story or anything like that. Um, it's uh, they're, they're moving that match, and the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal is also going to be on uh, on SmackDown, the SmackDown Before Mania. Um, from what I've been told, they're doing it just to make WrestleMania a bit shorter, which yeah. is uh, which is good. They're they're starting it at eight o'clock. They're hoping to wrap it up in three and a half hours each night. And uh, they're only cut, they're cutting down the pre-show as well. The pre-show is uh, is only going to be an hour long, as opposed to previous years where it's been two. It's so still three and a half hours a night. Yeah. <laughs> Plus takeover is now because they're doing it on two nights. What like almost two hours longer than than a normal takeover? <laughs> yeah. You, you know, it's funny. Is like now since NXT NXT is moving to Tuesdays. It's gonna be. It's gonna now be. Um, what's what's it start this week? Like the the Hall of Fame is gonna. Oh, the Hall of Fame says Tuesday. So Hall of Fame Tuesday, then Wednesday and Thursday are takeover. No, it's Wednesday's takeover one. Takeover two is the week after WrestleMania. Oh, oh, is it really? Yeah, the second half of Takeover is the week. I think that's what I thought. I thought it was the second I, week. I don't. I don't like it being all bookended like that. That's dumb. I don't. I don't like it. Period. I. I really think they should have just did a takeover. Why can't we just do a takeover? 
we could have done it this weekend. Right. And, um, like we could have done a, a takeover pay per view this weekend and then do Mania. I mean, I get it because Mania is two days now. You can't really do what we used to do, which was Hall of Fame takeover Mania, which I I still prefer that better. Like, yeah. but that's like a. Um, I mean, either way, it's still like a a full week of pro wrestling, like brand new pro wrestling content. That's that's yeah. a ton for I mean, yeah, expecting your consumers that. to consume. <laughs> um, but I am excited for for all of it. I definitely want to see all of it. Uh, what do you guys want to get started with? Do you want to talk about WrestleMania Takeover or Hall of Fame? What are we What are we jumping into first here? Who's well, in the Hall of Fame? Uh, right. Hall of Fame, and uh, right as of right now, there's twenty. They're, they're going to be combining it with uh, with 2020 since they didn't do a ceremony last year. Um, the 2021 inductees are going to be Molly Holly, Eric Bischoff, Kane, the Great Khali, and Rob Van Dam. Why? Why the Great Khali? Yeah, the Great Khali. <laughs> Well, because they're, they're trying to get in really hardcore with India, and he, he's a big deal in India, and, and he's training a bunch of new wrestlers and things like that. I mean, I mean, um, dude, he's he is he, the first the first Indian born world heavyweight champion. I mean, that's not something you can take away from him. That's definitely a thing that he accomplished. I don't think, I don't he think also, he also used to chop at people and hit them with basically his elbow. He could never hit the top wherever like they hit someone. <laughs> right. he, he was never good, but yeah. as far as like a run or a career, I guess that's considered a Hall of Fame career because like he got into it late and he was only ar- <coughs> around for a certain amount of time, and in that certain amount of time, he made an impact. Yeah, and- I mean, hey, he was a uh, <laughs> super tall dude. He's not. He's he's retired now. And he's a former, well, I think, two-time world heavyweight champion, if I'm not mistaken. So, I know it's just, you know, he's he's like synonymous with the Punjabi match, which is like terrible and like yeah. oh, it. Whereas, like, you're looking at the other people, all their body of works ma- like matter. Molly Holly matters for all the women that are wrestling now. She was basically the technical mm-hmm. wrestler when everybody else was in bra and panty matches, you know. And she was yeah. she she was a great act, you know. And then you, you know, Mighty, Mighty Molly is still one. Of, like the Hurricane of Mighty Molly was still one of my favorite things ever. And then you, Kane, you can't even. There's nothing you can say bad about Kane's career at all. And the same goes for Rob Van Dam. And then Eric Bischoff is, you know, the the guy, the guy almost took WWE down. Like, yeah. Like the guy, the guy deserves being all. They all do. Yeah. So, I, I mean, we we always get angry over this over a fake Hall of Fame, but like. You know, <laughs> It, it's uh, just, it is what it is, and they're combining it also with the uh, the 2020 Hall of Fames. Uh, JBL, the British Bulldog, Jushin Thunder Liger, um, the NWO, uh, the Bella Twins, and William Shatner. Oh, and also Titus O'Neil is getting the Warrior Award this year. Um, can we mention real quick? Uh, saying Great Kali doesn't deserve to be in the WWE Hall of Fame and saying Jushin Lager, who's wrestled one match in WWE, does. Mm. Um, I, don't, I mean, for sure, he influenced a generation, for sure. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, as far as being a WWE in-ring competitor, he, he wrestled Tyler Breeze once, and uh, I don't Which remember. Awesome. I don't remember anything before or after that. That yeah. match was so good. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and you got to think you should under lagers like 50 yeah wrestling and that match was awesome you got but the whole thing is like the influence you know even though like i knew you should thunder lager was from wcw and nwa when he used to wrestle over there and but uh he's the guy who influenced ray mysterio who ray mysterio influenced everybody else like, right. <laughs> like right. he's one of the all-time greats Definitely. So it's more about the the pulse of the individual and the impact that they made than it is their body of work. Yeah, I I, yeah. I see what you're talking about with Greg Kali, but like he's maybe he's going to influence somebody from that country that might actually be something down the line. But he was never anything, dude. I mean, dude, was, look at look at uh, Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal was influenced by. I mean, like. 
he he was wanted to represent his country like Greg Khali and oh, Canada. Well, <laughs> his his <laughs> culture, his I know. I'm just saying he was from Canada, so. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> And he actually joked about it a couple of times when they're all talking about him representing India. And he, he's yeah. like, well, I'm, I'm Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, uh, you know, last year or uh, 2019, they put in Jim Barnett, who's never done anything for WWE at all. He's just a legend. So uh, it's, it's more of a wrestling Hall of Fame than it is just singularly WWE Hall of Fame. So, uh, yeah. is that the guy who Jim Cornette, or I'm sorry, Jim Jim Ross does the the impression of him? And he goes, "My boy, my boy." I think so. <laughs> yeah. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, yeah. So yeah, man, no. uh, it's going to be a good night. Uh, Hall of Fame's are always fun. They always uh, at least partially turn into a bit of a roast of the other wrestlers. So it's it's going to be fun. I'm curious as to what Rob Van Dam's going to do. Um, I think that's going to be hilarious. Uh, there's going to be a lot of hilarious things. If you didn't see the... Um, Is he going to show up with his porn stars that he's been dating lately? Yeah. And- <laughs> well, <laughs> well, they, they recorded them already. Like, they did it from their homes. Like, their yeah. speeches and stuff. So, I don't I don't think it's going to be something they show up to. Yeah, I don't know. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But um, it's going to be entertaining, regardless um, another thing, um, I, I am seeing that night two of Takeover is happening this Thursday. So it's, is it it's Thursday? Four, I thought they said four four after. I, I, they were belting out dates, and, yeah. I, and I was going <laughs> out because it was the main event of NXT, which made no sense. So yeah. they have a battle royal, and then the six guys left in the battle royal wrestle in a gauntlet, and then that guy finally – like goes up against you know, yeah, it's like hard to keep track of. Like you you uh, just water it down so much where it's like, bro, I stopped watching re- like as as the casual fan. Let me say I'm I'm speaking as the casual fan. I stopped watching yeah, sure. wrestling because they made it too complicated, and then you just made it more <laughs> like think- uh, I from what I've seen, I I followed it completely. Uh for somebody that's like really into tournaments like I am. Um, and they never do tournaments anymore. I thought this was great. I, it, it's a it's a battle royal. The last six fight in a gauntlet match, and the winner of that gauntlet match faces the champion. I, I thought it was plain and simple, and everybody is like, I don't understand what's happening. It's plain and simple, man. There's six people, and the winner gets a mm. title shot. It's, it's, I, not that, it's not that difficult. I, I know, but me, I, 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 I have to admit, I. Uh, I fell asleep during that match. <laughs> well, then that's why you're confused, sir. <laughs> I, I'm just conf- I'm just confused on the um, what's his name the uh, the Dexter Loomis character. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's, it's so weird. like they they could have done more with him. Like I got I and it, it would have been more fun. Was I got him standing in the corner doing nothing and everybody else was wrestling each other and he's just staring. But every time they went to throw someone out, he should have walked over and threw them out and then went back in the corner and just stood there. He only did it once. Yeah. Now, dude, if they did that the whole match, this would have been awesome. Instead, they, he only did it once. So now his character makes no sense to me. Like, It's like, okay, I'm going to wait till they throw the big fat guy over the ring, and I'll, I'll help you with that one. But like, I'm not going to help any other. And then Eli, what's his name? Eli Drake or whatever, L.A. Knight. L.A. Knight, yeah. yeah. Did, did, they just, did they just sour on him immediately before he, like, he lost last week. Yeah. And now he won this week. Like, no, he didn't win. He didn't win. win. No. Uh, I, I don't know. I think, I'm thinking um, I, I'm thinking he's going to take it. I think he's, he's, it's going to be him and Gargano in night two. I hope. I, 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 like, I like. They need to make bigger stars. I mean, you know. Yeah. Dude, that guy, that guy is so talented. Uh, I can't remember his name. The Australian Samoan guy that uh, LA Knight wrestled last week on NXT, Bronson, Bronson, Bronson Reed. Yeah. Yeah. so it's so talented. He's I, good, I, man. Really, really good. I'm yeah. impressed, impressed as hell with that guy. Very I, much. I could see him up on the main roster. You know, who I, I could also see on the main roster. I hopefully they don't mess him up. Um, Santos Escobar, his yeah. mic, his mic work is so good. Don't mess him up. Yeah, I mean they'll they'll definitely they'll definitely do their best to mess him up, but uh, mm. it it it's uh, it'll be a cool it'll be a cool uh, evolution to watch. Definitely. Um, 
there's a lot going on in NXT right now. I guess we should just jump right into that. Um, night one, we're going to have uh, Io Shirai versus Raquel Gonzalez for the NXT women's title. Um, Walter versus Tommaso Ciampa for the NXT uh, UK championship. Going that's going to be, be awesome. awesome. That's, that's the only thing insane. I'm That's like the thing that I'm looking forward to the most in that on that takeover. Now, there's a couple things that I really want to see here. Um, and this is this is the one that's on USA on Wednesday. This is going to be the last USA show. Um, they have, they have the Gauntlet match that we were just talking about. Uh MST, MSK versus uh, Grizzled Young Vets versus Legard, uh, say it right, Legado Fantasma uh, for the NXT Tag Team Championships. And then Pete Dunn versus Kushida. Are you out of your mind. This is going to be amazing. I'm, I'm going to love every, every second of this. <laughs> this. This is what I'm saying, man. This is why I don't like the new setup. Could you imagine Tommaso Ciampa versus Walter? You get Kushida and Pete Dunn. You get Raquel and Io Shirai and Balor and Cross. Balor and Cross. And and maybe you get Johnny Gargano versus whoever wins the gauntlet, which they should have done on the show. That's mm-hmm. your NXT takeover. You watch that Saturday night and you just sit there and go, man, WrestleMania's gonna suck. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there, there's no way you could that's like a perfect pay-per-view. Like and now it's two nights with commercials and and it's going to stop the momentum of the matches while you're watching. Well, picture in picture. We're going to be keeping up with this in picture in picture. <laughs> that, like, and I'm not talking bad on the because the matches are going to be awesome. Like, right. I'm actually look. I I think Ra- Raquel's going to win the title, and I'm 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 excited for it because they handled her better than they handled Rhea Ripley and the other women that were supposed to be like super badasses. And, yeah. and I like I like the way they handle her. I I really do. And she's really good on the mic. So, and and I like how they have you know. Dakota Kai running around as her like little he, like little pain in the ass buddy. They like, you do a really good job with them. And uh yeah. like Pete Dunn Kushida, who's the best technical wrestler in, in NXT, that's it's, it's dude. That's gonna be nuts. And there's gonna be bleeding chests in that Tommaso Ciampa. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanna see another uh who was it? Walter and uh, Dragonoff. I want to see another one of those. Yeah, I, I want to see that happen on Wednesday on live television. That's going to be great. Uh, maybe, it's it's going to be a great. Maybe match. if I would have, want to see anything with Walter again, I would have to say Tyler Bate. The Tyler Bate cool. Walter match w- was really really fun, man. I, I really enjoyed yeah. that. Uh, and we got uh, night two immediately afterwards. This was one that's going to be on Peacock. Uh, Ember Moon and Chachi Blackheart versus uh, the Way yeah. for the for the NXT Women's Tag Team Championship. I hope they lose just for them booking them in that scumbag. Yeah, where they they took the title. The girls didn't even get to celebrate their titles for one night and get photos. Yeah. I was so angry. It's the first female tag team champs ever, and they they booked it like that where they come out and beat them for the belts. They lost it in fifteen minutes. So <laughs> I, I want one more. Can I can I congratulate Indy Hartwell in um, her her successful mission of tricking somebody into believing she's worth paying to work there? <laughs> Don't like Indy. Don't like Miss Hartwell. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody's in the same boat, man. I don't think anybody likes the most flawed fundamentals I've ever seen on WWE TV. Yeah. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I don't know, man. WWE likes who they like, and that's that's she, about she, it. I, I know her between her and Aaliyah. Yeah. They've, they've had Aaliyah for what, like seven years, and that girl's it's like, like progress has gone nowhere. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not good. It's not good right now. But uh, it's uh, the rest of the pay per view looks amazing. Uh, Jordan Devlin versus Santos Escobar. In a ladder match for the uh, NXT Cruiserweight Championship, unify to unify the the NXT UK and the you know, NXT uh, Cruiserweight Championships. Did I say unified? Did I mess that up? No, oh, you did, no, you didn't say unified, but it is to unify the well, the both, unified, yes. Well, he was. It was basically the interim right. Cruiserweight Champion versus the real Cruiserweight Champion type thing. So, right. yeah, Razor. Exactly. should be a good match. It should be a really good match, though. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely. They're, those two are both great. I, I just don't care for either character, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, we have Gargano versus uh, whoever the winner of Night One's Gauntlet match is. Um, we have Kyle O'Reilly versus Adam Cole in an unsanctioned match. That's yeah. going to be sick. It's going to be so they got, a lights you, out match. Do you think it's going to be cinematic like the last time they did a, the unsanctioned match or whatever, like last, last year for Mania? I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's just going to be a regular match. Uh, it's, it's, with, it's the Velveteen, the, with the Velveteen uh, Dream. Yeah, Velveteen Dream and uh, Adam Cole. Where they, uh, they successfully, wasn't bad. Where they successfully have made him disappear. <laughs> <laughs> you sent pictures to who, and he just slowly just pushed him right off the screen. And... <laughs> no, it's going to be great. Kyle Riley and, and Adam Cole is going to be like a really great match. Uh, yeah. like... And then um, you got Finn Balor and, uh, and Karrion Cross as well. This one, I don't know. I, I don't know if their styles are going to clash. I, I kind of think Karen Cross is kind of lumbering sometimes. Yeah. His, his moves are kind of sluggish. He's so big. He's yeah. so big. He's huge. But yeah. you're looking at you're looking at Finn Balor and moves at like the speed of lightning, like versus big yeah. lumbering dude. So I'm not sure if it's going to clash or it's going to be great. Like I, I don't mm-hmm. know yet. Well, like I think, I mean, it seems like everybody's clamoring for him to be up in the main roster. I'm, uh, I think uh, there was an exchange with Randy Orton on Twitter that was like, will you hurry up and just get up here already <laughs> and let's make some money? So let's, Karen Cross? Yeah. So that's, that's pretty, that's pretty uh, uh, high in the praise department. I think so. I think, I think uh, they're trying to fast track him as soon as possible. In, onto the main roster. It's possible. I mean, he, he definitely looks like a like a main roster guy. Right. He's, 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 a, he's a main roster guy. act. He's yeah. what is, what is his girlfriend or his wife or wherever she is like that? Her coming down with the singing and the the tiny outfits, and then you know he comes yeah. out with all the smoke and, and the and lighting, lighting effects. And, uh, ew, he he looks like a main event act. Like he, and you know how they are. They keep desperately trying to find the next Undertaker. You know, they did it with, like, three different wrestlers in the last four years, five years. Yeah. Be interesting. Be interesting to see what happens. And uh, all of that is on uh, is on TakeOver, two nights TakeOver. So I'm, it's gonna, I'm happy about it. Dude, I think they're going to they're gonna try to do the finger poke of doom. Yeah. I've, Austin Theory is going to win that gauntlet. Just, just do the math. I'm going to be so tired this week. <laughs> Three hours of yeah. all. What God knows how long the Hall of Fame is. Yeah. Three hours of NXT, two hours of SmackDown, <laughs> and then seven hours of WrestleMania, right into a three-hour roll. <laughs> and then NXT starts on Tuesdays after that. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> what is going on with the little dog? Did you see the promos for the little dog yeah, on what's NXT? Up dog? It's uh John uh, Johnny's girl. Uh, Ty Valkyrie. Oh, okay. Ty Valkyrie signed with uh, NXT, and she's gonna she's gonna show up on on uh, Tuesday night. Didn't and, they uh, give her like a new name? What what's her name now? Frankie uh, is the name I keep on seeing them. I don't Frank know if that's the name of the, I don't know if that's the name of the girl or the dog. So I don't know because <laughs> they just keep on showing the dog. So apparently, uh, Valkyrie or whatever her name is is gonna come on with a dog. Check them out with a Valkyrie. What, with armor and a winged horse? Where are you going to find a winged horse? Yeah. <laughs> you make one. I don't know. There was one in Endgame. Oh, if there's yeah. one in Avengers Endgame, yeah. you can have one in NXT. Yeah. CGI, CGI in pro wrestling. CGI. Hey, every single Roman Reigns match now starts with a giant gold Roman Reigns statue that doesn't exist. So yeah. if you can do that, you yeah. can, you can a, do the dragon. A, a, yeah, a dragon or a Pegasus or whatever the hell we want. I can tell you that. A Care Bear? A Care Bear. <laughs> I was going to see a lot of Care Bears staring, damn it. I'm going to see it all. <laughs> Vince loses his mind. Uh, you guys want to move on to WrestleMania? Because we got two nights of that to talk about. Oh, jeez. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> uh, night one looks pretty tight, man, because Cesaro and Seth Rollins, which I think is going to be awesome and amazing, um, I'm glad Cesaro is finally getting a singles match in yeah, WrestleMania. Wow. He's been there for like 10 years. 
Uh, so that's going to be cool. How wild uh, is that? It's his first singles match ever in WrestleMania. He's been there for 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> former uh, U.S. champ, for, former tag champ, raw tag team champ. All kinds of other stuff, man. Won, won the first Andre the Giant Battle Royal. He's had like eight managers. You know, it, it just go down like his list of creds. It's insane about, about what this guy's done. He's never had a singles match in WrestleMania until right now. Uh, speaking of never having a match, uh, Bad Bunny versus The Miz is happening. Um, I don't even know what to say about that. Let's just get the crappy matches out of the way. Uh, Steel Cage match, Shane McMahon versus Braun Strowman. Nobody well, that's that's that. happening. Uh huh. And that's next. a thing that's happening. Yeah, that's a thing that's happening. And yeah, let's move the tag team championship onto SmackDown because nobody <laughs> needs to see that. Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, anyway, that's, a, uh, that's that's an attraction. The same. Bad Bunny, his name is an attraction. It's it's a yeah. spectacle. It's not not that I'm saying it's attractive. <laughs> I'm saying that's the <laughs> the spectacle. I guess. Yeah, Braun Strowman throwing Vince, uh, Shane McMahon off the top of the steel cage. And that's probably what the main, you know, until Shane McMahon's dead, he's not going to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, they were, they were talking about it on SmackDown. And as soon as I heard the word stipulation, I'm like, it's going to be a steel cage match because Shane needs something to jump off of. That's what <laughs> it's going to be. Just just name it already. Don't, don't tease us with it because you know it's not going to be anything else. But... Uh, Moving on, we got uh, SmackDown Women's cha uh, Championship, Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair. I think this is going to be really good. Uh, yeah, good match, Raw. terrible buildup. What's that? It's going to be a good match, terrible buildup. Absolutely yeah, terrible. terrible. I, I, I'm getting to the point where I don't care what the buildup is because the matches look so good. I but do because they broke up the Hurt Business. <laughs> Yeah, that's the most ridiculous thing in the exactly. history of the It's list. actually the word like WWE is getting beaten up from every single angle over that. Like yeah. celebrities are reigning in, like Batista. <laughs> like, how stupid are you breaking up the hurt business? Yeah. Like, yeah. Coolest thing that's going on in wrestling oh. right now, and they just decided to just oh. destroy it. Quick shout out to Matt Bomboy, because he texted me last night and he was like He's like, you, you, Rick and Mark, better talk about how stupid it is. <laughs> He's like, it's effed up, effed up, yo, f that. And it was like, middle finger emojis. <laughs> it's it's literally universally hated mm -hmm. by no matter even like I was just listening to Jim Cornette trash it last night, mm -hmm. and like you know, and it wasn't like a, a usual Jim Cornette trashing. He's just like he was completely confused. He's like the coolest tag. You have the coolest thing in years. They look like professionals. They look like wrestlers. Every single person was talented. You have great mic skills. Like it, it's just, I hope I hope this is all a swerve, and they all get back together. I hope so. I hope so. They're gonna have to. I mean, there's such a public outcry right now. Like yep. you know, if, if there was this much of an outcry to get James Ellsworth booked. You know, you can put the whole Earth business back together. They got you know they got James Ellsworth a a freaking job. Not yeah. knowing, not knowing that dude's a creep. <laughs> oh man! It raised yeah. him. It raised so, him. From erase that guy. guy. <laughs> what you erase that guy? <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. That would be a better decision <coughs> than, uh, than breaking up the hurt business. <coughs> it's it's just I I've never seen. It's been a long time I've seen someone with WWE. You know, that's like besides like a bad skit or something like that. That's like universally like panned is like everybody hates it. Like legit yeah. across the board, everybody's mad about this. Yeah. And, you know, uh, hopefully, like I said, there's there's been a rumor that the reason why they brought Baron Corbin in is possibly what it is they're going to do is Shelton and uh, and Alexander uh, they got a. They got eliminated from interfering in the match, so that's why they brought Baron Corbin in because he wasn't in the match to say he can't. Mm -hmm. So they're going to use Baron Corbin to interfere in the Bobby Lashley Drew McIntyre match, and somehow he's allowed to be at ringside because right. of the tag match, and he's <laughs> not officially the Hurt Business man. Mm -hmm. Or they really fired all Cedric. the way around the block for that one. I know. Or they fired Cedric. And Shelton Benzman, now they're no longer part of the Hurt Business. They can come down to the ring. That could be it as well. I hope, I hope so. Giant swerve. 
I hope so. <laughs> it better be, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's hope so, man. Uh, it's it's going to be good either way. Uh, it's going to be a good match. Um, yeah, we got that on night one as well. Uh, Lashley and McIntyre, and then there's the the, uh, the new day versus AJ Styles and Omos. Um, I'm actually looking think, forward to this. Yeah, me as well. I, I think these are going to be good matches. I, I'm looking forward to we'll see what they're going to do with Omos. Like they, I, I've heard he uh, rumors that he's not been doing well with training. But uh, I'm thinking if you you got Kofi and Xavier, he's going to be in the ring with, and, and AJ, they're they're all going to figure out moves to do off his giant body. Yeah, they carry the hell out of him. I I think they could do some fun stuff with him. And Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Lashley, like it's this is going to be good. Like it, if they give him enough time to just, and if it's like a brutal match like he's been doing with Sheamus the last few weeks, it's it's going to be good, man. And it's a good. It's I'm a good. It. It's a good closer for uh, night one. Mm, I'm into it. I'm into it. Uh, night two, we got a good uh, couple good matches as well. Uh, we got Riddle versus Sheamus for the U.S. title. It's hopefully, it's going to be a squash and Sheamus just takes it. Um, we got Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn, which uh, I'm really, really looking forward to. Uh, I don't care about Logan Paul at all. I watch YouTube all the time, and I've never watched a single one of his videos because I, I keep on hearing what a douchebag that guy is. Uh, but I don't care about him. Uh, this match is still going to be great. So I'm, uh, I'm excited. To What's see his it. name? Logan Paul. Okay. There's Jake and Logan Paul. I always forget which one's which. Oh, the, it doesn't matter. They're both douchebags. The the, the, do, the the blonde douchey one. <laughs> And then there's uh, Sean Paul, who's uh, got the right temperature to keep you warm. <laughs> and then there's uh, and there's there's Aaron Paul, who's uh, who is uh, Jesse from Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, they got uh, Big E versus Apollo Cruz for the Intercontinental Title. I'm hearing this is going to be a street Nigerian fight. drum match. Yeah, it's basically it's what that is. <laughs> uh, it's just them getting I, away with. with I thought they were gonna have like people around the ring, like playing drums while they were wrestling. I was like, that's, that's, that's what I thought. Fun. That would like, be. Cool. Could be. <laughs> like, yeah. like if, if, they're, if they start playing along to the pace of the match while they're going, it's like I thought that would be really cool. And then like, like uh, it's a street fight. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, like if it was like a capoeira, like uh, like yeah. that, like only the strong. With like banana way, banana way, banana, and they are like, <laughs> that'll be cool to see. Uh, either way, it's going to be a good match. Oh, yeah, it'll be good. The, the, their match at uh, uh, Fast Lane was, was fantastic. So, looking forward to that, to seeing that again. Uh, the Fiend versus Randy Orton. Boo. We don't boo. Know. Not so, boo. This is going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. It, it, I, it, I just I want to see like them do another Firefly fun match, and somehow they open a closet, and John Cena is just like locked in a closet or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's just been taped up since last year. Where he's just in a cage? Is there like going through? Like he's just in, like a. <laughs> <you know? laughs> he walks through. Orton walks through, passes by Cena on the like in one of those. Um, like the Silence of the Lambs cage where he's got all in, like behind the glass and everything. He's like, you're not going to have a good time. It's going to suck for you. That'd be great. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in whatever they have planned for it because I think it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, dude, it's it's um, it's fun and it's cheesy, and that's what wrestling is. Wrestling is fun and cheesy, so just yeah. let it be what it is. Let it be here. I'm, I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, Oscar versus Rhea Ripley. I think this is going to be a good match. Why are you better? Why? I think Rhea Ripley has, in the last year, devolved. Her wrestling has not been that great. She that she had that clunker with Raquel Gonzalez, and they keep put, pushing her like she's the ultimate badass chick. And I just don't want to see someone like Oscar that's like put so much work in and carried the women's division for like over a year. Just she's going to get squashed by this chick. And I don't think a lot of people are going to care. I really don't think Rhea Ripley is carrying the weight they think she is. Like, I, I just don't think it, I, I just don't think it's going to work. It's one of those matches because it's live. I bet money they're going to cheer 
the hell out of Asuka and boo Rhea Ripley. And then they're going to be like in this bad position again. Like, mm-hmm. like I said, that's why they're doing all this stuff with Bobby Lashley. They're hoping people are going to boo Bobby Lashley when it comes out. He's um, going to get cheered. When that lightning strike hits in WrestleMania, dude, it's going to be, dude, they're going to lose their minds. <laughs> It's going to be cool no matter what happens. It's going to be very cool. Um, and the last match on WrestleMania that we're going to see is uh, Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns versus Edge for the Universal uh, Universal title. Quite honestly, probably the best match of all Mania. I think I think this is the best match they're going to on the card. Yeah, the build up has been so cool. Yeah, Daniel Bryan. Definitely- did you see the shape Daniel Bryan was in on Friday? <sighs> Yeah, Dude, he's ready to go. Like he's he, he look. I don't know if they told him this is going to be a long match, but he looks like he's ready. He looked phenomenal on Friday night, and then the shape he was in and everything. Uh, I'm actually looking. For, this is the the match mania I'm looking forward to, and I'm hoping Daniel Bryan wins it. I'm hoping right. they pull swerve with everybody and he pulls it out. Um, this is definitely the uh, the best match on the card with the best build up. Yes. Um, this is, uh, you know, there, there, there just hasn't been anything. There's, there might be a better match on the card, but definitely not a better match that's had a better build up because yeah, this has been going yeah. on since, uh, uh, since, since the Royal Rumble, which is what every match in WrestleMania should be, is built from the Royal Rumble on and not two weeks beforehand. Oh, yeah. You, you got matches like Cesaro and, 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 uh, and uh, Rollins that Rollins. could be a better match. Mm-hmm. But like the problem is like there's the investment isn't as much as the Daniel Bryan, and that's where I was talking about how the ba- the build up's been so wonky. Like we sh- we should be invested in all these matches, and honestly, I'm only invested in like two two maybe three matches. What's, yeah. what's Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks? That's uh, on night one. Okay. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. I just noticed that. So the tag the women's tag team isn't even on Mania. No. Oh, that's wow. Like, as much as I'm not a fan of Nia Jax, like her and Shayna have been like, you know, featured heavily on both shows and everything. Like, and they don't have a match on Mania. I mean, it could be, you know, they, they might do something tomorrow night on Raw because they have that match with uh, Asuka and, and Rhea Ripley where they're tagging those two together for no reason against uh, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. So they might do something. Somewhere down the line, uh, they just had Natalia on Raw Talk or Talking Smack or something like that. All pissed Their off. Their wife fell asleep when she started talking. <laughs> well, I mean, she she came off really pissed off, so it, it interested me. Um, where she was bitching that there was no real, there's really not that many women on WrestleMania this year. Um, no, Bailey, where's Bailey? Bailey has been killing it all through 2020. Everybody's been talking anyone. about that. What happened to Bailey? Is she sick or hurt? I don't Nobody's know. Said anything. Because if there's that out of all these women, you, you already have Asuka and Sasha on there. Mm-hmm. And I think Asuka, Sasha, and Bailey are the three that carried the entire women's division for most of the year. And then you have to say Shayna and Nia. And then you're looking at three women who aren't on Mania that were like pretty much featured the entire year. But like, let's shoehorn, you know, Rhea Ripley in there and like, you know. Yeah. I don't, um, I don't know. I don't. People were expecting Charlotte Flair. People were expecting uh, Becky Lynch to make a return. Ronda Rousey to make a return. None of this ever happened. So um, we have what we have, but unfortunately, they're not using what we have. So we're just going to have to deal with it, I guess. Unless there's going to be a Raw after Mania type of you know throwdown or something like that with all the women in it. I don't. I don't know. I don't know, I, I don't know man. I, I don't know. I just think it's. I think it's wrong, especially for Bailey. I think it's wrong. Yeah, that she's not on it, but like I said, she oh. hurt. She hasn't been on television, so maybe yeah, she's really sick. Has she done anything? It's all been that ding dong hello show. Yeah, so that's what I mean. And she hasn't wrestled. She's just been doing interviews. So yeah. maybe, maybe she's hurt, and they just haven't said anything. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Well, let's hope not. Let's hope she's uh she's all good, and maybe we'll see her in like a battle royal or something, something going on and um. For Mania, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But uh, right now, uh, we've talked a lot about the wrestling that's just going on this coming week. Uh, let's talk about what happened this past week. Uh, let's shine that spotlight on somebody who wins wrestling. Who wins wrestling? Blah, 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 blah. 
Um, who wants to go? Anybody got one? I got one. Go ahead, man. What do you got? Go for I'm it. I'm gonna say Christian Cage. He had his his first singles match in AEW. Opened up Dynamite this week, and uh, he beat Frankie Gazarian. I mean, it was a the ma- the match. You know, wasn't the the best match. It wasn't a bad match, but uh, I, I have to say, you know, Christian is the he still got it. He's still exactly as good as he was, if not better. So uh, my pick for who wins wrestling is Christian Cage. Yeah, his his uh, match was definitely better than Edge versus Jey Uso. You know, <laughs> like he didn't look clunky and didn't wasn't like I don't know. He just seemed off. Christian and Christian Kazarian put on a, uh, an old school wrestling match and and he looked good, man. It, 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 good pacing, right. everything. Mm. And uh, Brian Alvarez, you can you can eat it, dude. He went, yeah, after, yeah. he went. He went after Christian's gimmick, the outwork gimmick, and he's like, "Did he really outwork everybody?" He was trying to troll. It's like, dude, why do you have to be a douche about everything? Yeah. You're like a wrestler that never made it, ever. <laughs> and he attacked I, people that are way better than he ever was. Um, whenever you bring up this person, Brian Alvarez, yeah, I automatically go to, I don't know who the hell that is. Exactly. Yeah. So I imagine if I'm feeling that way and I've been in the wrestling business for 22 years, I don't know who the hell this person is. Most people shouldn't value his opinion. I know. It's just like this whole thing, like, because he's attached to Dave Meltzer. I'm supposed to, like, respect everything that comes out of his mouth. Oh, also, I don't know Dave Meltzer. Who's that? (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to go with then. You got to go with Mark. Camera guys. Camera guys, baby. I have to do it. For one of the best gimmicks, and now he's trying to buy the <laughs> Undisputed Error IP. <laughs> and it keeps annoying. Um, he keeps annoying Roderick Strong, which I really wasn't happy about him walking out. I don't like when they do that to characters. Um, but yeah, him like coming out with the Undisputed Grimes t-shirt. <laughs> and and then on top of that, when he was in the battle royal, it was LA Knight, him, and Dexter Loomis. He just pulled out a ton of money. He's like, "Look, you go that way, and you go that way, and let me win the match, and I'll give you this money." I love his gimmick. I love this whole like I won money off Dogecoin. And, <laughs> like I love it, dude. It's great. And GameStop. Game Stark. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, dude, the guy's entertaining. He's 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 something that's seriously lacking in NXT right now. NXT used to have, you know, like I said, Velveteen Dream's gone because of his issues and all these other, and it's him and Johnny Gargano are the only two that are entertaining, whereas everybody else is just watching. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're great matches, but like there's there's just no entertainment value in NXT when unless those two are on screen, and Cameron mm-hmm. Grimes has been killing it. Agreed, absolutely agreed. Um, I gotta go with uh, with Jay Uso. We were talking about it a little bit earlier. Um, his match with Daniel Bryan this week was absolutely fantastic. It was crazy. Uh, it's it's unbelievable that those two put that good of a match on in, in, for, on national television a week before WrestleMania, and they put on that good of a match on regular free ass television. Yeah. Uh, that is incredible. Jay Uso has been killing it uh, since Jimmy's been off the. Uh, off the card since he's been injured. He, he, he had a great feud with Roman Reigns, then he joined Roman Reigns, turned heel. Um, and every match that he's in, he, he destroys, man. Uh, he, he's definitely a main event player. He's a, he's, he's a main event wrestler. Uh, I just wish he would actually freaking win. If he could actually win a damn match, I don't remember the last the time he actually won a match. What's that? Maybe he'll win the Battle Royal. He's in the Battle Royal. Is he? Okay. Yeah, there's like all these people that are in the battle royal that I don't care about, but him, Cedric Alexander, and Shelton Benjamin are in it, and I hope one of those three win it. Hmm. Well, we'll see. Honestly, like three guys, three guys that actually entertain me all year, whereas the rest of them I couldn't care less about. You know, between the Hurt Business and Jey Uso just killing it for like the last nine months. But like, hmm. I'd like to see one of those guys like win it. Hmm. Oh, God damn. There we go, man. That's everything. That's everything wrestling all week. What do you got? What are you doing, Corey? Did did you go? Who did you say? Yes. What? I was just talking for like 10 minutes. Did I go? <laughs> what are you? 
you, you drowned you drowned out in a cave <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's a bunker did you guys hear me did, did everybody hear what i was saying i exist red Carter exists hey everybody i'm here <laughs> Son of a bitch. Uh, I want to also real quick talk about um, some AEW stuff. I mean, not not incredibly, but the fact that like, show. It, it, they, I thought I thought they had a they're having good weekly TV. I'm not liking not I don't want to even say that I'm not liking it, but it's it's confusing and weird that there's so many factions and every week a new yeah. faction is kind of like uh, you're watering down how important anybody is. And the funny part about it was like Jericho, I think Jericho said in his first book, like something that helped him get through WCW was never being somebody who joined NWO. And now everything in AEW is NWOs. Like there's 17 NWOs. <clears throat> it's see, yeah. they did say they did have some highlights, but I understand because what is it, his name? TJ T T J Marshall or whatever his name is. QT. QT Marshall. Yeah, uh, EJ Max. Yeah, uh, he's got his, <laughs> he's got his new faction now called the QT Spatutis. <laughs> but he he just formed a new faction on 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 uh, AEW this week. That already just the, the new one last week, and mm. and the week before that was MJF's new faction. So it's just like every week there's a new faction, uh, a heel, a new heel faction every week. It's, yeah, it's like oh, you're stacking it, you're stacking it in the red. We don't need that many. And it, it is a shame, too, because that, that match with uh, Miro and Kip Sabian, the arcade, whatever match, mm -hmm. that, that was fun with, tr with the return of Trent Beretta, and that, that was some really good stuff. Chris Statlander. And Chris Statlander returning, which right. they desperately need because they don't really have a lot of good women wrestlers, you know, female wrestlers. Mm -hmm. and she's definitely one of the better ones they have. They they, they did they had a lot of good matches on. Yeah, you know, they had the Lucha, the Lucha Brothers and – Laredo kid and you know some good stuff. It's just the, the faction thing is getting too much. It's more than it's more than uh New Japan, and that's where they're stealing it from. Because New Japan has like multiple factions, but like they're like they're not even factions, they're almost like teams, like almost like it's like hard to keep track. Yeah, and it's almost yeah, with, with New Japan, it's like oh, they're representing this, and it only seems like they're representing like like three or four factions. In AEW, it's like uh, there's more factions in AEW than there are like singles competitors on any wrestling roster anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> on top of everything else, now I'm hearing Big Show is bringing back Captain Insano. Did you hear about this? No. <laughs> He's thinking about doing the old Captain Insano gimmick from Waterboy. Wow. That's uh, that's gonna be happening. It's like, wow, that's what you left the company that you were in for twenty five years for, uh, is to do an old Adam Sandler bit. In how a uh, company? Compromise. <laughs> just gonna laugh at people and call people virgins. That's all. That's all it's gonna be. <laughs> I think that's gonna be it for this week. Uh, thank you very much for joining us for Ross and Rock. Cody, have any plugs? Plugging anything? Get anything uh, out there? Uh. Just like I always say, if you enjoy what we're doing, uh, let us know you exist. Comment on the videos below if you're watching us on Rick's YouTube page. <clears throat> Subscribe to my YouTube page, youtube.com slash Corey Castle, for full episodes of my podcast, Evolving with Corey Castle, which you can also listen to on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Uh, you know, uh Make sure you follow me on TikTok. I just posted. I just posted on TikTok some stuff that that uh, involved Rick with our ninety percent gag reel, and uh, so uh, he had just posted that on his on his YouTube page. So I just took a little chunk from it, <laughs> and uh, you know, just just keep on keep on consuming the the content, and we'll keep on putting it out there. Definitely, All right, Mark. You got anything? Happy Easter. And uh, get well, DMX. <laughs> get well, DMX. Get well, Bailey, if you are, in fact, sick. Um, happy Easter to everybody out there. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my YouTube channel. It's tinyurl.com slash YouTube Rick Connor. The DCW matches that I filmed last weekend are going to be up there very soon, uh, as soon as today, possibly, uh, if I can get my act together. 
Uh, but uh, thank you very much for watching. That'll about do it for this episode of Rassle Rock. Check out more episodes on RassleRock.com. Uh, let's take it out like we... Oh, I didn't do my thing. I'm Rick Connor. I'm Corey Castle. I'm just sitting here. <laughs> let's take it out like we always do with Mr. Nick Burt. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. Join us again for another episode of Rassle Rock. This has been Jay Davis speaking.